Now, black people are four times as likely to die with COVID-19 than white people. A report showed a strong link between deaths and deprivation that faces people from a black, Asian or minority ethnic background. Well, joining us now live from Manchester is Faye Bruce, chair of the Caribbean African Health Network. Uh, good afternoon to you, Faye. Um, Good afternoon, Sam. Um, when you read this ONS report, it tells of a very bleak picture, doesn't it, for your community, that they're four times more likely to die than white people of COVID-19. Does, does that surprise you? It doesn't surprise me, um, but the, the, um, you know, the results are staggering. They are really stark. But what we do know that in the black African Caribbean communities and in our Asian communities that we've had health inequalities existing for over decades. Shortly before the um, pandemic was announced, we were doing a conference in, in Greater Manchester, which was looking at the high rates of maternal mortality within the black Caribbean and African community that shows that we are five times more likely to die as a result of our pregnancies and complications that could occur Follow, sh shortly following. So we're used to having high rates of health inequalities, whether it's from strokes, whether it's from prostate cancer, mental health. We are subject to poor health outcomes across nearly every health indicator that you can possibly think of. We are particularly disadvantaged. So COVID-19 is only laying bare some of those health inequalities that already exist. The really fascinating thing, I think, when looking at this ONS report, is that the puzzle isn't easily solved or explained away, is it? Because even when you compare like with like, so you take uh, somebody of the, in the same age bracket, the same income bracket, the same health conditions, uh, the difference still exists, doesn't it, between black people and white people? What, what, what do you think explains that? What we see is we see barriers, constant barriers to um, black people in terms of this, the institutions, the structures that exist um, that cause black people to be, you know, in low paid jobs, in um, poor housing, the, the environment that they live in. There are a lot of conditions that we're exposed to. And a lot of this is down to the institutional. And I do call it out as it is institutional racism that we actually do face. We face a lot of barriers where we can't progress. Many of our communities are particularly concerned about things like the education, you know, the, the um, grades that people have been predicted through COVID, you know, the, the health system as well. You know, people are fearful of actually going into the hospitals at the moment because of the lack of trust. So we do see that it doesn't really matter where you come from in terms of your income. If you are black or if you are of colour, you are more likely to die. And we can see that in all the images that we've seen across the news, you know, from consultants, you know, to domestic, you know, cleaners, we see that there is the same issues occurring. And, and Faye, when you say that the system is institutionally racist, and, and in particular, you mentioned that the healthcare system there, I mean, what, what would you cite as examples of that? So we, we, we've known for some time that the barriers in terms of progression, for example, so we can look at some of the reports that have been out, you know, the, the um, snowy white peaks re reveal the bullying, the harassment, the, uh, the unlikelihood of a black person actually progressing to senior levels, even though they prove themselves, you know, you find that the barriers particularly exist for them in terms of, you know, reaching to those senior positions. Also, what we do find is a lot of benchmarking, a lot of, you know, benchmarking against white majority communities. Um, for example, and, and I'll use this one because it's quite specific to, to COVID. It, the other day we were talking about being fitted for, um, for gowns, for the uh, PPE. And we were talking about the mask and how the mask, because it's, it's particularly fitted towards a Caucasian facial features. We're actually finding that black people, it doesn't fit. So we know that there are things that are particularly benchmarked towards white communities where we need to be, you know, in, you know, in the room talking, making decisions so we can actually have, you know, some kind of, you know, equity, you know, in terms of access. So we do need to be looking at the whole health system where we do have barriers to progression, barriers to care. So the care that people receive, lots of fear 
around when people go into hospital and do not feel that they're going to get the right or the same level of care as people from other communities. We've got some real issues that we need to address um, in the health system and in other um, institutions across the UK as well. Yeah, there are lots, lots of longer term issues that, that, that need fixing. Um, I also want to ask you, I mean, you're talking about people who work within the health system. One of the findings of the BMA report is that people uh, from the BAME uh, community were perhaps uh, you know, being bullied to do things that that perhaps they, they didn't want to do, but they were frightened to speak up. And I'm referring specifically to people speaking up against lack of PPE. Do you think that's a significant factor? It is absolutely significant. And we, um, as a community, so Khan is currently doing a survey at the moment, which is identifying a lot of the issues that are going on, how COVID is actually impacting. And what we do know is from people that are working on the front line, because of the, that, you know, the, um, the racism and the way that people are treated, they are less likely to speak up about PPE. So if you've got a black person that goes into a ward to do, to do a shift, and they normally work on a ward which is probably not going to be a COVID ward. They would normally be moved and they're not particularly getting the right PPE and they are not speaking out because of what they think that they're going to be faced with. So we do have a lot of fear. People are going in and they are fearful about working on the front line in terms of how they're going to be protected. And they do not see that they are going to get the same protections as people that are not of colour. And I think it's a really worrying position that we are in um, when we do have our frontline staff feeling fearful about going into work. Yeah, you raised some uh, really important points there. OK, Faye Bruce, really good to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.